money to all in this situation. He took a pinch in the back. He got beat for crying out loud. We used heart attack. Me. Managers on a major league baseball team don't make decisions. No, no, no. The credibility in this situation is worse than losing your job. Was it over with it? Trevor's Bob Pro The castration of the major league baseball manager as we know it. Ask me about my win. What's going on, everybody? Uh, if you tolerated the actual basketball game when it came to the NBA All-Stars, good for you. Unfortunately, it's just a different style of basketball than what you see over the course of the year. And if you're, listen, if you're a fan of the players, which a lot of people are, then you enjoy it. Uh, unfortunately, basketball, even during a regular season, is played completely different than what you see in the All-Star game. And you know, you, you've heard me uh, vent for years about just the uselessness of all the professional sports all-star games. You know, you get the best players out there, which is important, and that's the purpose of it. And think about it. The players themselves look at the game as an honor. They look at it as another notch on their belt, right? You know, X player is... Uh, you know, 12-time All-Star, 15-time All-Star, 10-time All-Star. You know, it does matter to the players to get selected and be part of the game. Now, unfortunately, the, the competition is, it, it's not there. And, it, you know, there's people that are diehard basketball fans that may try to sell me or you on the NBA basketball game being really worth watching. And I, you know, the only, the only thing that I could see that would actually bring a little more attention to it how about you have the best of the WNBA go up against the best of the NBA? Have a, one of the old uh, old school battle of the sexes. You know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Billie Jean King against Bobby Riggs. Why don't you do something like that? Um, a, a lot of uh, revelation is back out because the All-Star Game was held in Utah. Um, their greatest player of all time, Carl Malone, uh, did did something you know reprehensible while he was in college, and I think it just shows the the change in society now than the 1970s and the 1980s, where they they were able to let something like this and what Pete Rose did in the 1970s be swept under the rug. And the question is always going to be, you know, is this a double jeopardy type of situation or is it? It, you know, have we reached the statue of limitations where a person cannot be, they may not be able to be prosecuted for it, but they could certainly be canceled in a court of public opinion. And listen, I'm, I'm in favor of somebody being held accountable for what it is that they did, because knowing that, you know, if the same person was the same age in the year of 2023, they were not going to be able to get away with what they did in whatever, 1978, or, you know, what Pete Rose did in 1973. And I do think that there is an image that does stick with them. You know, are we going to throw Carl Malone out of the Basketball Hall of Fame? No, that's not going to happen. And I said before, if you're in a Hall of Fame, there's nothing that's going to happen to make you be out of it. You know, O.J. Simpson is always going to be a pro football Hall of Famer. You know, regardless of what you want to do by trying to take away his Heisman Trophy, he, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. And the other element which I laugh about is, you know, you're going to try to uh, disparage John Stockton, who to me is one of the greatest point guards in the history of the National Basketball Association. I think Oscar Robertson, I think Steve Nash, I think Jason Kidd, and you cannot go very much further. Uh, you know, Magic Johnson, you can't go very much further than that without throwing John Stockton's name in there. The all-time leader in, in assist, maybe the greatest basketball player to ever play for the Utah Jazz, but he played syn synonymously with the fourth leading scorer in NBA history in Carl Malone. So, you know, they're always going to be known as a tent. I don't have any issue with the Utah Jazz, with the, the basketball all-star game being held in Utah honoring its two greatest players. Now, you want to say, hey, you know, Stockton says some silly things about the vaccines, whatever. You know, you could disagree with him, but then, you know, not take umbrage with the great career that he's had. 
Now, like I said, in a court, uh, in a uh, court of public opinion, the cancel culture that's out there, if you subscribe to it, you know, you look at what Carl Malone did, and listen, it's not a, a suspicious, you know, it's not, hey, he was accused of, he actually went and impregnated a 13-year-old girl. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if you don't want to buy Carl Malone memorabilia, go for it. You know, you don't have to. You know, if you want to look at Carl Malone as a, a really bad person and as great of an NBA player as he was, he was probably that bad of a person, then go for it. But I have no issue with the Utah Jazz honoring its two greatest players while the All-Star Game is being held in Utah. So, number two, I've been working on this, and I wanted to really uh, throw this out there because I think there's a lot of misconception when it comes to the best teams in the history of pro football. Now, listen, that question by itself is subjective. You could go out there and you could say the Patriots and the Steelers, they won the most Super Bowls. You know, you could say, hey, the Cleveland Browns won the uh, four straight AAFC championships. And this is going to be one of my efforts to throw a teaching moment in there. Now, I've one of my point of contentions for years has been the Super Bowl era and the prior to the Super Bowl era. Now, football existed before Super Bowl one. When Super Bowl one happened, or the first uh, A AFL NFL championship game between the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs in the beginning of 1966, right? Yeah, 1966. That was even the people, even the people that were covering the event, even the players that were playing in the game, the coaches that were coaching in the game, didn't understand the significance. They didn't think it was going to be the first championship game in the history of professional football, which a lot of people look at right now. And I think it's a little silly. I think it's a bad look if you don't want to acknowledge the fact that there was professional football, professional football championships won long before the first Super Bowl. So I've spent some time dissecting the greatest games and the championship games that were played in the history of football. And remember, you know, the nobody is able to go into the future to see what's going to happen. So there's NFL championships from 1922 all the way to 1965. And once again, those are considered the, the, the ultimate championship game. Winner of that game is the champion. In some cases, some some teams were just given the championship because of the best record. There was no championship game played. The AFL, prior to its merger and being part of the Super Bowl era, had its own champions from 1960 to 1965. The AAFC, which was a league that existed, I think it was the All-American Football Conference, from 1946 to 1949, was the precursor to the AFL, um, a league that was run by Paul Brown and his team, uh, you know, not coincidentally named the Browns of Cleveland, won the championship all four of those seasons. And then if you look at the beginning uh, of, of football history, there was, I forgot what it was called, and I'm actually going to look it up now. I apologize for not having this info, but this is... Uh, the past ball show brought to you by JohnPLA.com, St. Aloysius Church in Jackson, New Jersey. By two ways, one passion food truck located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And looking at, so prior to the NFL championship, there was a game that was called different. The Akron Pros won the first year. And... The Chicago Staley's and owner George Hallis ended up winning the second year. But it was called, and I still don't see the name of the game. It was, yeah, I'm looking through Wikipedia right now. Let's just say that it was the, uh, the, the game, the, the championship game. At the time, it was considered a exhibition game of the two best teams but in history 
it's thought of as the championship. So in 1920, the Akron Pros won. In 1921, the Chicago Staleys, who are now the Chicago Bears, won. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 teams that have won four or more championships. And I'm going to separate this once and for all. AFL, NFL championships are legitimate. They're right up there with a the Super Bowl. You may not agree, but there is no Super Bowl in, from 1960 to 1965 with the AFL. They have their own league. They have their own championship. They have their own championship game. Nobody knows that the Super Bowl is coming after. So the NFL from 1922 all the way to 1965 has its own championship, its own league champion. So there's nobody at that time that can contest it and say it's not the champion of the year. So the NFL from all that, all those years had its own champions. The AFC from 1946 to 1949 had its own champions. And like I said, the, uh, the precursor to the NFL, we'll just call the championship, was uh, won by the Akron Pros in 1920 and the Chicago Staleys in 1921. So there's five teams in the history of the National Football League that have won four championships. And some of them might surprise you. We'll start with the ones that won a couple Super Bowls, and that's the Rams, the Cleveland, Los Angeles, and St. Louis Rams, won two Super Bowls and two NFL championships. The Baltimore and Indianapolis Colts won two Super Bowls, one in Baltimore, one in Indianapolis, and two NFL championships. The Kansas City Chiefs, also known as the Dallas Texans of the AFL, won one AFL championship and three Super Bowls. The Philadelphia Eagles won three NFL championships and one Super Bowl. So teams that have won five, we'll start with the Dallas Cowboys, who won five Super Bowls. The San Francisco 49ers, who won five Super Bowls. And then the Washington, known at the time, Redskins, won two NFL championships and three Super Bowls. So that's three teams there with five. Two teams with six championships all happen to be Super Bowls. And they're kind of the teams that are known as the all-time leader in Super Bowls. And, you know, like I said, Super Bowl doesn't exist before 1966. So because of that, the New England Patriots and the Pittsburgh Steelers have both won six Super Bowls. Now, the next two teams have won a total of eight championships. The first one is the New York Football Giants, won four NFL championships and four Super Bowls. And then the next team has never won a Super Bowl, the Cleveland Browns four AAFC championships, and four NFL championships. Then after that is the team that won a total of nine championships in the National Football League, and that's the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears won eight NFL championships and won Super Bowl for a total of nine championships. And the team that really should be considered the New York Yankees or the Montreal Canadiens or the Los Angeles Lakers and Boston Celtics of the National Football League is the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers have won 13 championships, a total of nine NFL championships and four Super Bowls. We don't talk about it as much. We don't acknowledge the team that has won the most championships. Instead, we want to keep the era from 1966 to now, which I don't think is right. This is the time where we're going to spend a little time saving sports history as we go over some of the things that happened on this date in uh, past years. And today is the 21st day of uh, February 2023. Back in 2016, Denny Hamlin won the Daytona 500, the closest finish in the history of the sport by just 0 0.01 seconds over Martin Truex Jr. In 2021, Novak Djokovic won his ninth Australian Open. That was just a couple of years ago. Um, famous birthday is on this date. 
a longtime Boston Red Sox owner, Tom Yawkey, was born on this day in 1903. And, and I'm sorry, NBA Hall of Fame head coach, Dr. Jack Ramsey, was born on this day in 1925. He led the 1977 Portland Trailblazers to the NBA championship. Uh, Baseball Hall of Famer, Alan Trammell, who I've spoken a lot about on this show, was born on this day in 1958. Uh, former New Jersey Devils uh, forward Brian Ralston was born on this day in 1973. Former NBA guard Steve Francis, a big time scorer in the NBA, was born on this day in 1977. Former NFL wide receiver Braylon Edwards was born on this day in 1983. Also on this day, uh, former NHL defenseman and restaurant entrepreneur Tim Horton died in an accident at the age of, what was it, 44. And Pro Football Hall of Famer Henry Jordan uh, died in an accident on this day in 1977. This is the Past Ball Show, brought to you by JohnPLA.com, by St. Aloysius Church in Jackson, New Jersey, by two ways, one passion food truck located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. You can always check out the podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and of course, you can listen to the Past Ball Show, watch and see my ugly mug on YouTube. We'll be back with you probably in a couple days. Probably going to do some baseball previews. I was thinking about doing a baseball preview video for each one of the 30 teams. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Next week, we'll be down in spring training down in Florida, catching some games in Jupiter, West Palm, and Port St. Lucie. God bless you. And as always, I'll see you on the other side. Chris Bryant was on the Chicago Cubs roster opening day. I have many leather-bound books. My apartment smells of rich mahogany. Why don't you give it all or a majority of it to the team that wins the freaking World Series? I was going to listen to that, but then I just carried on living my life. I may come out as the biggest Major League Baseball manager apologist. That'll only make someone work just hard enough not to get fired. Because hitters are going out there saying, I'm either going to hit a home run or I'm going to strike out. And if I don't get a pitch that I feel like I could drive out of the park, I'm not even supposed to be here today. Especially you prospect whores and hoarders are going to be a little pissed off at me when I say this. I'm a dude in the lead, and a dude disguised as another dude. There are only two managers in baseball's Hall of Fame who have losing records. One of them is the iconic Tommy Mack, who you could say, in spite of winning five World Series championships as a manager, could be in as much as a pioneer. <laughs> And what side of the spectrum they're on? Were they pitching? Were they batting? If your favorite team was pitching and a ball got inside and hit a batter, there's no way it could have been on purpose. But if, if you were a fan of the team that was batting and a ball got inside and hit somebody or went behind somebody's head, absolutely 100%, unequivocally, that pitcher was throwing at it. They put their tail between their legs and decided they're going to do exactly what they're told. You're damn well right. Better give him a contract extension. You're damn well right. Better make him the manager over the next series of years. 35 years ago, I could have loaned your parents the money for an abortion.